Grace and peace be unto you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is truly the day that the Lord has made, and we are so glad to be in it. We thank you so much for joining us this evening for our Wednesday evening Bible study. It is our time to feast on the word. We thank you once again for tagging and sharing as we sit in the word of the Lord for this season, lessons in the Lenten season. Friendship, we are so glad that you are here today. Please tag and share with a friend, a family member, and a Facebook friend to again enjoy the lessons in the Lenten season. The Lord has certainly been blessing us. He's been challenging us, charging us, and championing us to move forward forward in the things that he has called us to do. So let's get ready, get ready, get ready as we dive into the word. And as I love to say, we will dine on the divine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this evening's lesson. We thank you, God, that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard, and it hasn't even entered into our hearts the things that you have in store for us because you love us. We thank you now for this Lenten season as we set ourselves apart for your use and your glory. We thank you for self-discipline. We thank you, God, for self-denial. We thank you, God, as we dine on the divine that you allow us to execute your word line upon line and precept upon precept. Father, tonight we thank you for divine revelation. We thank you for your word being illuminated in our lives and rejuvenating us for this season ahead. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer, let us all say amen. Amen, amen, amen. We are here at the finale of our lessons in the Lenten season, and we want to extract from this particular text, once again, Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, our staple text for the lessons in the Lenten season. And we touched base concerning Jesus's temptations, temptation number one, temptation number two, and temptation number three. Tonight, we will again touch base concerning the temptation of Jesus Christ, number two and number three. Let's get down to the word. Temptation number two, Throw yourself down. This second temptation came quickly, as we read in verses 5 through 7. The enemy dared Jesus to cast himself off of the pinnacle of the temple. The Bible says these words, Then the devil took him up into a holy city, and he had set him there to stand on the pinnacle of the temple. Verse 6 says, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. He will give his angels charge concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike or dash your foot against a stone. Verse 7 says, Jesus, in his infinite wisdom, he said to him, no it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. That's it. So for it is written, this is a phase and phrase that the enemy used. We can trust that the enemy understands the word of the Lord, and he is, and catch this, an excerpt. He's an expert at quoting the word of the Lord out of context and confusing men and women of God. He looks to defeat us in using the word of God. The devil attempted to quote again out of context, Psalms 91 verses 11 through 12. He said, Jesus, go ahead. He used this Bible verse against Jesus. He said, please, the angels will rescue you. And it will be a spectacular, catch this, self-promotion. The enemy used the word of God to attempt 
to force and push and entice our Lord and Savior to use the word again for self-promotion. This is a lesson in the Lenten season. The enemy said it is written. He attempted to use the word of the Lord, the sword of the Spirit. Hmm in a different context in which the Lord has given it to us to champion us forward. We understand that the enemy is a defeated foe. We understand here in the text that he falsely used the word of the Lord to promote his own agenda. He attempted to test our Lord and Savior. But we understand that Jesus Christ... <laughs> the Son of God, he will always pass the test. So in lessons in the Lenten season, he is reminding us that the word of the Lord is fulfilled with promises that are yes and amen. That's why it is essential for us to sit in the text so that we will not use the word of the Lord out of context. <laughs> We thank the Lord today that he reminds us that the enemy looks to deceive us, but Jesus Christ looks to push us into achievement. We thank him that he decided to step into his humanity, understanding the issues, the concerns that we have in our lives. And he, the enemy, wanted Jesus Christ to neglect his duty. Wanted him to voluntarily move without time and throw himself down from the pinnacle. But we know <laughs> that Jesus Christ understood from his entire knowledge, because he is the word, who became flesh and dwelt among us of the whole counsel of God. It is essential for us in this hour to receive wise counsel from the word. That Jesus Christ teaches us here in lessons in the Lenten season to rightly divide the word of truth. Hmm. As stated in 2 Timothy 2 and 15. We as believers... We must be very intentional in understanding the word of the Lord. That it is proof positive that if we sit in the text, the Lord will deliver his word and we will dine on the divine. He will give us revelation and illuminate his will and word in our lives. So it is important for us as Christians not to be deceived by quotes of the word out of context. We must accurately and correctly apply the word of the Lord. It is written. That is our weapon. It is written. It's also our promise. It is written. It's also our place of championship in Jesus Christ our Lord. I need you to tag that tonight. It is written. So Jesus, he reminds the enemy of who is in charge, that he is our sovereign. He is our savior. He rules and super rules our lives. That's why Jesus responded to him, the enemy, when he attempted to force or manipulate our Lord and Savior to demonstrate that selfishness that at times we have. But Jesus, <laughs> in his love, concern, and infinite wisdom and power, understood that he was on the road to the promise. He was on the road to the spectacular and moving from the cross to reservation. He is moving now to a place of promise a place of performance into the revealed will of God in the earth. So we, beloved, understand today that we must focus primarily on our relationship with Jesus Christ, that we have absolute confidence 
in the protection of the word of God and the promises that he will perform. That we, because we belong to him, we are in covenant relationship with our Christ. We, the beloved of God, we have rights and privileges that are directly connected with the lineage that we have in Jesus Christ our Lord. We are heirs and joint heirs of the promises of God. They are yes and amen. So, as we sit in the lessons in the Lenten season, the enemy attempts to taunt Jesus and catch this concerning his identity. How many times, if we're honest tonight, the enemy attempts to taunt us concerning who we are? We are royalty. The Bible calls us a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a spectacular and peculiar people. That's who we are. Our identity is sure because of our DNA. I need you to tag that tonight. Our identity is sure because of our DNA. We have the DNA of Jesus Christ running throughout our body, and we can demonstrate the DNA because of the love that Jesus Christ has for us that runs from heart to heart. So the enemy says, if you are the son of God, <laughs> there's nothing new under the sun. That's a trick the enemy tries to use against us because he wants us to step into a place where we need to prove ourselves. I need you to tag that tonight. I have nothing to prove. <laughs> you are who you are. You stand in the truth of who you are in Jesus Christ. There's a litany of promises and pieces of your identity that we find in the word. That's why it's essential for us to say it is written. We are the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. Why? Because it's directly connected with our inheritance. <laughs> we thank the Lord for the inheritance that we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, previously in the first temptation, the enemy wanted to again push Jesus to turn the stones into bread because he was hungry. But because Jesus passed that test, <laughs> the enemy tries it again to prove who he was. But Jesus understood that he had nothing to prove. He is simply the son of God. He is simply the great I am. His stature is fail proof. Thank you, Jesus. And we thank the Lord that we have our identity that's fully executed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So here, the enemy wanted to precipitate a crisis and demand the fulfillment of the promise. The enemy will always attempt to shake us and move us out of God's divine time. There's a time and a season, the Bible declares, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. For what? Every purpose under heaven. There's a time for you to do the things that God has called you to do. And the enemy wants us to step out of time. But we thank the Lord for Jesus <laughs> because Jesus is our champion. So here we are reminded that the enemy attempted to move Jesus Christ out of time, out of the will of God. If we recall, when Jesus Christ died on the cross... Prior to the time of the garden, the chief priests, the elders, and the crowd came to what? Capture Jesus to bring the fulfillment of the promise, to push him towards the cross. 
But Peter, because he loved Jesus and he thought he was doing the right thing, but he impulsively cut the ear of a slave of the high priest. And what did Jesus do? According to Matthew chapter 26, verses 52 through 54, Jesus said, no, put your sword back. <laughs> put it back into its place. <laughs> For all of those, those who take up the sword shall perish by the sword. Jesus said, you cannot move out of time. You cannot use your flesh or your emotions or your natural abilities or materials to move out of timing. We move in the timing of God and we execute according to his will and his way and his word. Hmm. He reminds us here in the text as, again, we extract lessons in the Lenten season. That we don't allow the enemy to move us out of timing. By asking us, if you are who you say you are, do this or do that. No, we are who we are, and what we do, we do for the Lord. Let the works that I've done <laughs> speak for me. I need you to tag that tonight. Let the works that I've done speak for me. When men and women see your good works, they glorify our Lord and Savior in heaven. Tag that tonight. Do not allow the enemy to push you out of timing. So here, as we again extract lessons in the Lenten season, we thank the Lord for his response. That he understood that he is the solid rock in which we stand and all other ground is sinking sand. He is unmovable, unshaken by outside sources. Thank you, Jesus. We cannot be moved by outside sources. We cannot be moved by what others say concerning us. The question is, what does God say concerning you? We thank you. You have nothing to prove. So here, we thank the Lord for the benefits that we have through the blood of Jesus. And that Jesus ministers to us as he expands us. Remember, this is a season of, a season of springing forth. It's a season of rejuvenation. It's a season of realignment. So he's reminding us that he will minister to us. Thank you, Jesus, as he expands us. So here, we step into faith, reminding ourselves that the key to expansion is always diligently seeking the will of God and being led by the Spirit. <laughs> I'll say that again. We are looking to grow and to glow, right? We're looking to grow and to glow. We're looking to expand. We're looking to become larger in Christ. The year of moving into being the whole more that he's called us to be. But the key is, and catch this again, to diligently seek the will of God and be led by the Spirit. We cannot be led by our flesh. We cannot be led by our emotions. Our emotions will push us to do things that are ungodly or do not show forth the glory of God in the earth. That's why it's a time for us to set ourselves apart, to sanctify ourselves, to fast and pray during this season, because it's a season of resurrection. It's a season of growth and development. It's a season of war. It's a season of partnership. It's a season of purpose. Thank you, Jesus. It's a season of promise. That's why he is, he's in letting us know today it's essential for us as we expand to seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And what happens? All these things will be added unto you. Let's say the addition, thank you, Jesus, is in the seeking. 
God is reminding us the addition is in the seeking. As we seek, he adds. Thank you, Jesus. As we seek him, he adds to us. There's such a download of revelation concerning seeking God because he expands our minds, right? He expands our thoughts, and our thoughts lead to our behaviors and our actions. So he's reminding us again in lessons in the Lenten season that we do not have to bow down to the enemy and move out of God's timing, but we seek God first. We're not led by pride. He wanted Jesus to be led by pride. He wanted Jesus to sit in pride and say, oh, I know who I am. I'm Jesus Christ, so therefore I'm going to acknowledge this test, and I'm going to move out of time, and I'm going to do something that the Lord himself has not sanctioned me to do. But we thank God for Jesus with his tenacity, his wisdom, and infinite divine power to know who he was and that he had purpose in the earth. He came from heaven to earth to show us the way. From the cross to the grave, his debt, our debt he paid. Thank you, Jesus. That he paid our debt for us. He knew his purpose. Someone say, I know my purpose. And I'm going to seek God diligently for the expansion that he's calling us to this year. So keep in mind that the test of throwing yourself down from the temple. It was first the test of self or pride or flesh or the physical man. And then the second test was spiritual. So it's a twofold, right? A twofold fold prong test that we have. One, it's fleshly, right? A test in our carnality, our flesh, our desires, our lust, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. Then the second test was spiritual. But the test, thank you, Jesus, strikes at the heart of a prepared victory. The victory belongs to you. Jesus Christ, in the lessons in the Lenten season, is reminding us that there is always a way of escape in temptation. Thank you, Lord. That as we escape a physical temptation, we also must move in the spirit. So we understand here that Jesus is reminding us in this text that there is one no doubt of who he is. But the enemy attempted to pull him into a state of pride. <laughs> but Jesus Christ stood in wisdom. <laughs> he stood in the position of power because he knew who he was. Never mistake Meekness for weakness. Say that again tonight. Tag that in the text. Never mistake meekness for weakness. It's essential for us to understand the real power is in restraint. Thank you, Lord. The true sign that our Lord and Savior lives inside of us through the Holy Spirit is what? It is restraint <laughs> that you will not do something that you have within your power to do because you're in your feelings, because we were offended, because someone challenged our pride, someone challenged our position. <laughs> Lessons in the Lenten season. Yes, God is charging us and challenging us during this time of Lent. So we, again, learning from the experiences and the temptations of Jesus Christ, 
that we are reminding ourselves that we'll never step into the place of the flesh because of people. Thank you, Lord. But we'll always stand in a position of power, of prominency, and of authority because we do things God's way. Someone say that tonight, I must do things God's way. When we execute and we function according to the will and the word of God, it will always produce a godly result. Thank you, Jesus. A godly result and a godly reward. Why? Because we've decided and we are very intentional with moving with our behavior and our actions according to the word of God. We will not get in our feelings in this season. Thank you, Father. So here, as we again extract from this particular text, and as we learn from the second temptation, we will always be prompted to move according to the promises of God. That we will always make the decision to understand it's essential for us to trust God in all of our ways. That we will not operate in self or our flesh, but we will maintain and retain the nature of Jesus Christ as we have seen in the word. That we must always retain our dignity, our poise, our self-respect as we sustain our position in the earth. We are reminded today, again in this second temptation, that as we seek God and as we extract and unpack his will for our lives, that we are on a road to promise. We are on a road to promotion. <laughs> we are on a road to recovery. We are on a road to restoration. I need you to receive that tonight, that we are on a road and we are going somewhere in God. Thank you, Father. Our final temptation in this text, that the enemy asked Jesus to worship him. Remember, he tried <laughs> to attempt to push Jesus and entice Jesus to operate according to his flesh. To ask him to turn the stones into bread. That didn't work. Then he tried again with temptation number two. With the pride of life. If you be the son of God, I need you to jump <laughs> to your certain death. Because Jesus Christ, he again in the earth, flesh, right? Both divine and human. <laughs> the enemy knows where you're going. And he wants you to prematurely exit the plan of God. But we thank God for Jesus. Because if Jesus Christ would have taken the bait of the enemy and jumped off the pinnacle, again, his natural body would have ceased to exist. And there would be no cross, <laughs> no grave, and no resurrection. But Jesus Christ knew the ultimate plan of promise. He understood that the plan would lead to, again, our salvation. Thank you, Father. He understood that the plan of God was essential to our promises. <laughs> so, here now he tries at this point to appeal to the lust of the eyes. According to, again, in this text, Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. The Bible says again, the devil took him up to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, 
All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. And Jesus said, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God. And him only you shall serve. So essentially, and catch this, this vision or this temptation invited Jesus to take a shortcut to the cross. Jesus came in the earth so all the kingdoms of the world in their glory would no longer be under the enemy's domain. The enemy offered Jesus what Jesus already possessed. How many times will the enemy try to dangle something in front of us? But Jesus Christ reminds us it already belongs to you. You do not have to stand in compromise. You do not have to take what the enemy tries to give you. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell within. This belongs to our Christ. Therefore, it belongs to you. So here, the enemy longed for, the, for our Lord and Savior to worship him. And this really revealed the enemy's heart. Showing, again, the revealed word in Isaiah chapter 4, verses 13 through 14. The Bible says these words. He is still the one who said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of, of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most high God blasphemy. The enemy has some nerve to present this visionary presentation and the representation of what God already possessed. That we are reminded that the splendor of the word, the splendor of this word belongs to us. I need you to catch this tonight. The enemy will show us the reward, but not the responsibility. The enemy will show us the blessings, but not the burden. There is a responsibility that we have as Christians. Our responsibility brings about a reward. There's a burden that we must carry for the Lord's sake. And the blessings of the Lord make us rich and add no sorrow. So here, we are reminded that our fallen fall forefather Adam, he gave away his authority in the earth. Because God gave Adam the earth as a stewardship. And that's Genesis chapter 1, verses 28 through 30. But because of sin, because of our forefather Adam, falling for the enemy's devices, Jesus Christ came to save us from the fall. So here, we are reminded that the world, the fallen world, is in a mess. If we're honest, there's so much chaos around us that the earth in itself is in crisis. But the Bible is reminding us that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, he told us he will take on the weight of the world. He will take on the responsibility of the earth. He will carry us, even in places of temptation, as even in places of crisis, 
even during our hard times, as long as we trust him. We must trust him in areas where we cannot trace him. He's reminding us of the responsibility that he has for us. There's, there's no one that the enemy can take out of Jesus Christ's hands. We belong to Jesus. From the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet, we belong to him. That's why you have nothing to prove. That's why you will stand in the righteousness of God. You will stand in the favor of God. And you will execute life according to the recorded word. The word of God is the will of God in the earth. So here, as we sit in this text, and we see the heart of the enemy, and we understand that our descendant, our forefather, Adam, we understood that he took the bait even though God told him not to. How many things has the Lord told us not to do and we decided in our flesh to do it anyway? Thank God for grace and mercy that follows us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Lord, for mercy and for grace the unmerited favor that we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So again, we are reminded of our position in Jesus Christ, our Lord. That we are reminded that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That the enemy's power has nothing on the infinite power of God. We understand that in the challenges of life, that Jesus Christ, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords, fulfilled the full plan of God on the cross, and he said, it is finished. So therefore, we being Christians in the earth, we cannot compromise. We cannot compromise for short-term gain. We cannot compromise because the power belongs to us. We cannot compromise because Jesus Christ has given us the picture of victory. We are reminded throughout this text that we must be very principled as it relates to our actions. That we must stand in the truth of the word that gives us great and the greatest assurances that we win. I need you to tag that tonight. That we must stand in the assurances of God's word because it will assure us that we win. This is the winner's circle, the winner's conversation through Christ. I need you to tag that tonight. Winner's circle and winner's conversation through Christ. This is the winner's circle. So we have great assurances through Jesus Christ our Lord. That even though he is unseen, he, he is always there. He's there in the midnight hour. He's there in the hospital room. He's there on your jobs. He's there in your homes. He's there in your communities. He's there in our country. He is there. So here, as we close the lessons in the Lenten season, the enemy will always attack us at every vulnerable point. Catch this, hunger, trust, and responsibility. The enemy will always, he will always attempt to tempt us 
at every vulnerable point. We're hungry, meaning that we need, we have a desire for something. Have you ever had a desire for something that you just could not obtain? Well, yeah, in that place, the enemy would say, well, I can give this to you. But guess what? Thank you, Father. It's a counterfeit. It's not directed to the promise of God. God said every good thing comes from above and that there is no good thing that he will withhold from us, his children. So we cannot take the bait because we have a fleshly desire. If there are empty areas in your lives, guess what we have to do? Allow the word to fill us up again. Allow the presence of the Lord to fill us in those empty places. The Bible says those who what? Hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. We have to change our palate. Thank you, Father. We must retain and at times regain an appetite for the word. And we must trust God in all areas that we rest in the truth that we know. For the truth that we know will set us free. Well, Jesus is what? The way, the truth, and the life. So we do what? We rest in Jesus that he has everything under control. And we cannot negate our point here tonight of responsibility. We must hold firm to the responsibility that we have in Jesus Christ our Lord. We must. It is essential. It is necessary for us to take accountability and responsibility for our actions. That God has given us full access and authority through his word. And we must understand that what we do and don't do right it is very it is directly reflective of who we are in Jesus Christ our Lord that's a challenge tonight that we must check ourselves and ask ourselves the hard questions in the time of challenge are our actions directly connected with the word and will of God? Do we, as carriers of the anointing of God, through our divine access to God, do we carry out the great commission of God? Do we love our neighbors as ourselves? Do we make disciples out in the hedges and the highways? Do we compel others to come? What a challenge and a charge tonight. So we, as the beloved, we are making a decision tonight to walk in the word of the Lord that will provide us great victory. Remember, the enemy is defeated and God is exalted. So we will not allow the enemy to ruin our mission in the earth. That we have spiritual victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. That tonight as we close, that on the theological level, it is very clear that we have a relationship with God and a relationship with each other. The sign of the cross, the vertical and the horizontal relationship that we have. And Jesus, throughout our time together in the lessons in the Lenten season, he's promoting application to his word. That we must be able to what? Understand and be able to use the word of the Lord 
in making choices of what is good and what is not. That we must be very clear and intentional in understanding that we have spiritual resources that will always meet our physical needs. I'll say that again. We have spiritual resources that will always meet our physical needs. That we, because of the investment, we have security in our Savior. And that the reality of our faith means that we sit in the spectacular display of love, humility, power, and authority that our Savior showed the enemy. That we must understand and recognize that God has a plan for you. Please make that personal tonight, that God has a plan for me. He says, I know the plan I have for you, that they are good and not of evil to what? Give you a hope and a future and bring you to an expected end. What you are expecting from God, God said, I'm going to take you through it. Someone needs to catch that tonight, that God's going to take you through it so he can bring you to it. I need you to tag that tonight, that because of God's plan, just like he did for Jesus on the cross, he took him through it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, so he could bring him to it. Where is he taking us to? The place of our expectation. He said he'll do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. According to what? The power that works inside of us. Someone say, I have power in me. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? We are the temple of power. We are the temple of authority. We are the temple of love. We have access, thank you, Jesus, to everything because of Jesus Christ our Lord. So here, as the enemy may attempt to tempt us on every side, the Lord is calling for us and for our absolute devotion and obedience to him. There are ways to achieve certain victory and spiritual success. That is trust and obey. We'll say that tonight. Trust and obey. How do I trust him? Check his record. <laughs> Someone say that tonight. How do I trust him? Check his record. He has a personal record with you. If he brought you through that, and only you know what your that is, and we have multiple that's, right? If he brought you through that, he'll bring you through this. If he brought you through it, he'll bring you to it. Just check his record. And secondary, we have one, the personal record, the relationship we have with our Lord and Savior, that he's brought us through so many things. We hear our seniors say he brought us from a mighty long way. By faith, he's brought us. And by faith, he'll continue to carry us all the way. And then secondly, his record is his word. I'm telling you, we must become wedded embedded in the word of the Lord. We have to learn to fall in love with his word again. That's a part of the lesson in the Lenten season. Jesus always responded with it is written. He always responded with the word. Therefore, we're praying tonight that we fall in love with the word all over again. 
that he reignites the fire inside of us, that we will check his record, that we will learn of him, and we'll continue to make wise decis decisions as we sit in the staple of God's word and we obtain wise counsel. So we thank the Lord tonight that we are the redeemed of the Lord. And we can say so tonight because of Jesus. We thank you for meeting us here once again for our lessons in the Lenten season. The Lord has certainly blessed us. He's encouraged us. He has given us the richness of his word that he's going to continue to move us from where we are to where we need to be, that he's continuing to groom us, to grow us, to allow us to glow up in this season. And I am certainly excited beyond measure, beyond words concerning you. The Lord is up to something, and he is up to something good. So we thank the Lord tonight again for this time of study together. Please tag someone and share, again, our series, the lessons in the Lenten season. I promise you that, again, if you just sit in the text and you just sit in the word of the Lord, and you just digest everything that the Lord is sending us through his divinity, I'm telling you that you will see the results of victory because victory belongs to you. So just want to continue once again to encourage your hearts and your minds. Let's continue to remain focused on Jesus Christ our Lord because we want focus, faith, and favor. That's from Sunday morning's message. Please take some time as the Lord is threading our messages together from Sunday morning and threading again our lessons in the Lenten season. So this is the conclusion again of this particular lesson of uh, the Lenten season and the Lord is certainly going to continue to give us great, great inspiration and move us from glory to glory to glory. Looking forward to seeing you right here next Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. via social media. Please again ma'am and sir continue to tag the text and understand that again if we sit in God's word we win <laughs> thank you Jesus the word equals winning so we thank the Lord that we are on the winner's side that this is what the champion circle so as we come in close to each other we remind each other I am a champion I need you to tag that tonight I'm a champion. Why? Because of our Christ. So looking forward to seeing you once again uh, next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please tag somebody and share. And let's sit in the lessons of the Lenten season. God bless you. Please, again, let's talk to each other, wave at each other, have good conversations with one another. And let the Lord continue to sharpen us. Because the Bible says iron sharpens iron. And so do we sharpen the continents of a friend. Thank you, Lord, that we are friends of God. And he's sharpening us each and every day so we're better together. Love you, friendship. Looking forward to seeing you once again next Wednesday at 7 p.m. as we dine with the divine. Have a blessed evening.